Hello, my friends. So those of you who are on the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the socials know that I recently got off of social media and this week I'm excited to tell you all about it. This is in no way a muster schmooze. I am not here to tell anyone what to do. However, because this has been something so on my mind for really a lot of years at this point, this decision of whether I wanted to be on social media or not. And I'm specifically talking about Facebook and Instagram. I'm still on LinkedIn. I decided that it was worth it to me to stay there. A, because I don't really like the platform, so I don't spend time there. Maybe one day I'll learn to like it. And B, because it's such a helpful way for me to connect as a businesswoman with podcast guests. And I'm on WhatsApp, which is technically social media, although that was surprising to me when I found out. So what I wanted to talk about today was my decision, because as I was struggling with this decision for myself for such a long time, it was so helpful for me to hear from other people and how they made those decisions for themselves, both for and against. And really, I don't talk about this. I'm actually going to, what I want to do is read to you the post that I put up on Instagram and Facebook, which has an image that says, this is my last post. And just to sort of give my thought process and some of the main things that went into my decision to leave social media. I'm actually recording this now already a couple of weeks post. I recorded one right away and I didn't like it. So I'm re-recording it and I'm kind of looking forward to reading back through it, <laughs> to be totally honest, because having now had this out of my life for a couple of weeks, I think I'm in a very different place already mentally than I was when I first wrote this post. Um, Again, this is not here for me to tell anyone what they th- they should be doing or for me to say I'm in some way better or firmer or anything like that. But I do think that for any of us who, any of all of us are living in a time where there are so many new things available that have not been around long enough for us, us to really understand the impact on our well-being and our lives. It's worth making sure that we're being intentional. So whatever your decision, I don't know what the right decision is for everybody, for anybody except for myself, but I do know that being intentional is is critical for all of us. And I also just want to say that ultimately I feel like this is really an intuitive decision. Um, I asked a lot of Shilas, like a lot, probably more than I should have or needed to about me being on social media. And it was completely across the board that it was perfectly fine for me to be there, to be using it, to promote my business. And that was actually one of the most confusing things for me because if it was fine, then it wasn't clear to me why I was still feeling so conflicted. And sometimes we need to not be so intellectual about our decisions. And when I finally gave myself permission to just do what my gut was clearly telling me to do, it was so obvious that getting off of Facebook and Instagram was the answer. I know there's people who are just like not so affected and like not that plugged in. Um, I found them to be like really quite (laughs) influential in my, my thought processes and my time and in my, you know, all sorts of things. All right. So here is the post that I sent out announcing whatever, not that I was ever some, some big influence or anything, but that I was leaving social media. It says one of the best pieces of coaching I ever got was about making decisions. Instead of weighing the pros and cons, the idea is to look at your reasons. They tell you everything. My reasons for staying on social media, specifically Instagram and Facebook, aren't great, but they were enough to keep me on for a while. Primarily, the decision was based on fear. Fear that those who might need my work wouldn't find me. Fear that my business would suffer. Then I remembered, I'm not God. My reasons for leaving are unique to me, so I'm certainly not casting judgment. But I know that I get super curious about how other people make these decisions. So for that reason, I'll share them for whoever is interested. And then this is just a bunch of bullet points. So the first bullet is, I'm a better parent when I'm not on social media. I'd love to say with coaching, all things are possible. And I certainly know that there are wonderful parents out there who are on social and have worked out a balance that is right for them. For me, these two come into conflict too often. Okay. So side note on this one, I think I'll just comment on each of these as we go. Now that I, as I said, I've been here for a couple of weeks now, I coach on this a lot. And I think that there, you know, as if you've been listening to the podcast for a little while, you know, that there's this idea of buffering, which is like what we do when we don't want to be dealing with negative emotions. And sometimes the solution is to learn how to feel your negative emotions, but that doesn't mean that you can't set yourself up in a place where the buffers aren't so easily available. 
So for instance, if a person, let's say had a problem with alcohol, they can't get rid of alcohol, ever seeing alcohol for the rest of their life, but they might not want to keep it in their house. Right. And so I think that partly as I was writing this hundred percent, my number one reason with my parenting, but I think that it was also really helpful for me to have coached so many people who found that social media was distracting them from their parenting because it was really hard to not see it in myself when I was helping other people dealing with the same problem. Okay. The next bullet is publishing on social feels inauthentic to me as someone who's deeply concerned with promoting mental health and well-being. Every study I have found with the one exception of the one Facebook funded has shown significant correlation between social media use and mental distress. Okay. So here's my commentary on this one. My husband and I actually teach in seminaries and he goes into yeshivas to talk about technology, intentional use of technology and, uh, social media. There's actually an amazing, he has a partner that does this in America. So if you are interested in this talk in America, I don't know how he's, you know, he's pretty fully booked, but if you are interested in getting him, uh, please reach out to me and I'm happy to see if I can make that connection. If you're in Israel, you should totally have us come in. It's a mind blowing presentation because I think so many people associate this just with from kite and not with mental wellness, unfortunately. And there are so many people outside of the firm world that are making the decision to get off of these platforms. And there is literally no tie in to their religious level of observance. It is just a mental health decision. And the studies really are quite strong and compelling that there is significant correlation between depression, anxiety, and mental distress and social media. So I want to say that a little bit, like, I want to be really clear on that. I even, yeah. I just want to be really clear on that because I, I, I think that it's really important that everyone knows that. And some of you might know that that's information out there. And some of you might be surprised by that because a lot of times we talk about the positives of being able to connect and stay in touch with people. But the actual facts on the ground is that this is not something that's good for your mental health. All right. Next bullet point. (laughs) I found that I'm not great at moderation. I'm more of an all or nothing type. I don't want to spend mental space or discipline on not checking social. Okay. So I don't know if I have so much more to say about this one, but I do think this is just ties back to the idea of know thyself, right? Like know who you are, know what works for you. And I've tried a lot of versions of moderation, even to the extent that by the point where I quit social, I was writing up my posts in text And sending them to my VA, who's amazing. Shout out to Jesse. We love you. And she was doing all of the posting to social. I had no need to ever check in at all. (laughs) And yet it was so much easier. It has been so much easier. I was right on this one. I wasn't sure at the time that I wrote this, that this would work out, but I was really right that it was, it's so much easier for me to just not be on versus to, you know, have that like the degree of separation that keeps me not directly posting because there was still always that poll. I do have the account. Maybe there's a comment, maybe there's a message that I need to respond to. At this point, if someone sends me a message, they get a auto reply to reach me somewhere else. And it's not on my head anymore. Whenever I take social media detox breaks, I find myself surprised by how quickly and dramatically my mental landscape changes. I stop feeling like life is happening online. I get calmer. I feel less pulled. I surprisingly don't feel any FOMO. This one, I have to give a little bit of a shout out to the DMC podcast. You guys know I love you. Um, at one point, you had a episode on social media, and at the end, you had you had like a, a like a voice note from someone who had left social media, including WhatsApp. And one of the things that she said that stuck with me so strongly was that. She felt like while she was on it, she could never get off. And then once she got off, she realized she didn't really feel FOMO. That was like, sometimes these little things you stumble across can be life-changing. That for me was life-changing because it made me realize that that's exactly how I feel. I always liked to do a detox break, either in LOL or Tishre, and then did another one in Nissan. And I highly recommend doing this for you. I highly recommend if you're still on social, give yourself a full month. It's such a gorgeous amount of time. Give yourself a full month detox break if you're finding that it's like just too much because it's enough time for you to adjust to a new reality. It's enough time for your brain to spend its social energy on the actual people that you see on a day-to-day basis as opposed to the people that you scroll past on a day-to-day basis. 
So I just am so grateful that she said that because I feel like it helped me to clue into how much that was the reality for me and made me really feel like it's so important to me to, to find that in my life, to have my social energy on the people that I see on the day-to-day basis or that I connect to by making phone calls or even ongoing WhatsApp conversations. I having fewer higher quality relationships and just trusting that the people who need to find me can find me anyway. Whether they need to find me for work, by the way, or just for they're meant to be in my life and I'm meant to have a relationship with that person. Okay, next bullet point. Social media doesn't allow you to control what you consume. So I often feel like I'm shaking off a disturbing post or even something as simple as an image that makes me feel just 1% less like I measure up. I think this is another one. It's like, how picky are we being with our brain? How picky are we being with what we're consuming, what we're allowing into our world, into our orbit, into our consciousness? And for some people, that's it's enough to just unfollow a bunch of people and just unfollow the people that don't leave you, you know, don't spark joy. And for other people, it might be the entire platform is problematic. I want to offer deep, high quality material. I like long form, deep thinking. I think I'm better at it. So I'll be increasing my focus on written articles, email, and podcasting, which are more natural avenues for me. I want to say that this is not me trying to say that there is nobody doing deep, high quality content, producing deep, high quality content on social media. I actually can think of a couple people right off the top of my head who I think are doing beautiful, deep, meaningful work. What I meant is that there's a different skill to get a concept across in a bite versus in a long hashed out, right? Like going deep, exploring, trying different things type content, like a podcast, which is much longer, or even an email. An email is, gives me so much more room to explore concept than a social media post. I don't like that I get limited on the number of words. And of course, podcasting and Amir Sashem one day, davening that a book will happen. So again, I'm not here to say that you can't be deep and be on social, that there aren't people because there for sure are. What I mean to say is the long form. I was limited in the long form and I am definitely better at long form than I am in short form. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out like how to be better at it. And then I finally realized like I'd rather focus on what I'm good at than what I'm not. Okay, last one. Finally, Baruch Hashem, the How to Glow program, coaching program, is growing and thriving and the community is my first priority in my business. Going with the mantra, do fewer things better. If you you need an invitation to join us, this is it. And of course, you can join us anytime at kaylalevin.com forward slash coaching. Yeah, I guess there's not much to say on that one, except that it's just been delightful and thrilling. (laughs) I don't know what the word is, but we have so many new members every single month coming into the program. I am so grateful for all of you who are members inside the program. And it's so exciting to be making new topics, to be thinking about what you're needing coaching on, to be in there. I'm almost every single day inside of our Slack community coaching people or answering questions on the submit a question feature and every week in a live coaching call. So we have so much time to spend together and for me to be focusing on my clients. And I really feel like those are the people who need my top attention when it comes to my business. So it's, again, I love that mantra. Do fewer things better. Okay. Finally, I said, I've gained from being on social by having new people in my life that I deeply value that I don't know how else I would have met. So I hope those of you who feel compelled to stay in touch, do so either by joining my email list or via WhatsApp. And I wrote Zuckerberg can still have that one. I love my reasons for leaving social media and love that we all got to connect. XO Kayla. P.S. There are some incredible interviews coming out in the next few weeks. I debated putting this off so I could more fully promote them, but some decisions are better made now than later. Definitely make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. So yeah, if you're hearing this episode and you're not a regular subscriber, I have some incredible episodes. And I just had one with Raquel Kurzenbaum. You got to go listen to that one. I absolutely loved, loved that conversation with her. So make sure you subscribe, listen to the podcast. We have so many amazing episodes and a lot of people tell me what they do is they just go through and they just grab a couple episodes that really jump out at them. And then the vast majority of you go back and just listen straight from the beginning. And there's so much growth available to you. I am so grateful to be able to offer it to you. 
And those of you who want to take this work deeper, who have something coming up for you that you really just want that extra support to make sure you're applying this material in a way that makes your life so much better. Kayla11.com forward slash coaching. I have such a reasonable monthly membership coaching program and it's an unbelievable community. And I would absolutely love to have you in there. All right. Those are my reasons for leaving social. I'd love to hear where you're holding, what your thoughts are. Um, again, if you go to kayla11.com, if you're not on my email list yet, you will have a pop-up there. You can sign up, you get my free marriage workbook and you join my email list. After a few, few introductory emails, you just get a, a weekly email from me. And unless there's like something really special going on and you can reply to any of those. I read my own email and I um, love hearing back from you on what you're reflecting on, what you're thinking about, what's been helpful for you. And um, that's it. Thank you so much for being here and have an amazing, amazing rest of your week. Okay. Bye-bye.